Coach, good morning. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing pretty well, guys. How are you? Okay, not as good as us. Huh? Yeah, right. Everybody's We're fired hyped, up, man. Coach. We're hyped. Um, is that the difficult uh, – first question, I told the, the audience 12 minutes ago, I was going to ask you this off the top. How loud was it? I mean, it was pretty loud in there. When they went on their run, I mean, their fans do such a great job. When we got – you know, when we got down, they were. They, I mean, when when we got down, you know, eight, the, the eight or nine, the, the crowd really got into it. When Kentucky got down, they got into it to get them back. I mean, they're such uh, knowledgeable basketball fans, and they're they're uh, they're really uh, they're really really into it. But you know, it's like I told our guys, we got to focus on what goes on on the court, control what we can control, be great at what we're great at, and just just do what we do. And um, our guys were able to do that, but the. The crowd was into it. They were, uh, they were, they were, uh, they were hoping that last call was going to go uh, the other way. They started chanting "Go Big Blue" and all that stuff. But uh, luckily, we were able to uh, to get out of there. Tell me your point of view of the final sequence and, and kind of what your thoughts were when the ball was immediately inbounded. When they took they took Tremont completely out of the well, we out did, of it. We knew that we knew they were going to take Tremont out. Skyler prefers to drive it left, so we knew we had Skyler up the left side of the court where we wanted to go because they were going to put two on Tremont. Skyler was able to catch it without having to go back towards Kentucky's basket and get ahead of steam. Going down, we had uh, Cavell down there in the opposite dunk, dunker spot, so if they help, uh, Cavell could get to the front of the rim and do what he did. So um, it was, uh, you know, our guys executed well. We, we, we um, In that situation, you, you know it's going to be more of a scramble situation. I'd actually be more apt to call timeout if I'd have made the two free throws uh, like Kentucky did to be able to set the defense. Anytime it's a scramble situation like that, I know you did a sub, but anytime it's a scramble situation like that, it, it really is a benefit uh, to the offense. There was nothing I could have drawn up to get us a shot like that at the rim. Um, and so I thought our guys executed well. We knew what we were going to do. We played with great poise. And, um, you know, we got fortunate there. Cavell and, and Nas, I mean, Nas was right there to tip it in as well. And what a drive by Skyler, even getting that shot up and, and coming off the rim like it did. You you mentioned the word poise, Coach, and um, when I look at this team, one of the great ironies to me is at the beginning of the year, with a couple of those losses, the knock on the team was it couldn't finish, right? Oh, this team can't finish. Right now, it feels like there is not a better finisher in the entire nation. When you look at the second halves that y'all have put together recently, what goes in to creating a team that is so good at the most high pressure moments like this LSU team seems to be. Well, we just you know we just work on it. We work on those six minute games every day. We try to keep it as simple as we can. You know, value the ball, take care of the ball, make our free throws. We did a great job of making the free throws. Gets overlooked. Tremont went to the line when he drew that foul late in the game, made the one and one, which is not easy to do. You want to talk about an arena being loud? Yeah. You want to take it, take a couple deep breaths and do that, and then. Be solid on defense. I thought our defense was just phenomenal in the second half. Maybe our best half defensively um, all season. We gave up a couple couple too many offensive rebounds, but we really, really guarded them. Uh, we were able to get our game plan into the game, and our guys were able to settle in, which was uh, which was great. But when you play with poise, you play with precision. Um, you know, you give yourself uh, you give yourself a chance, and I think. Uh, we put a lot of time into working on it. We put a lot of time into our strength and conditioning program to make sure that we're in great shape as we come down the stretch. And our guys, our guys have a lot of confidence. They have a lot of confidence in each other. They have a lot of confidence in our plan. And when you got that, we're able to execute and find ways to uh, to pull games out. Yeah, and you know, go, going into the game yesterday, we talked a lot. We were comparing the two teams, as you do. And we talked a lot about how well a big separation point here. Kentucky's defense just appears to be far and above way better. Than else shoots of, and that and that's going to be the difference in the game. Like if you told me that y'all shoot forty two percent, that Tremont and Sky be three of thirteen each, lose the offensive rebound. Like there's a lot of elements in this box score. I would think there was no way LSU is going to pull this off if that's the case. But you did, and a lot of it was because of that defense. Do you feel like your team made a statement defensively last night? Well, we had some good stuff too. We couldn't go in there and turn the ball over like we've been turning it over. We only yeah. turned it over eight times. We had eight steals, and we won the free throw battle, which is very, very difficult to do. But we drove the ball, and we're much more aggressive in the second half. And, you know, you've got to, you've got to overcome some of the shooting with, you know, we've been overcoming it with rebounding. I knew we were going to have to shoot it better uh, because I, I had a feeling they, they didn't really guard Marlin very much. I had a feeling that's what they were going to do. And I knew we were going to have to shoot it better but because we weren't just going to be able to get on the offensive, offensive glass like we have been. Yeah. 
part of the reason we're good on the offensive glass so well is because we're able to put teams in rotation and Kentucky's defense does not rotate. They pretty much stay home with everybody. It's one on one. That's why second half when we were able to just drive them one on one and get in the paint and draw fouls, we, we were much much better. And uh, so it's tough. You know, I knew we were going to have to shoot a higher percentage or get fouled a lot. We didn't shoot the higher percentage, but we were were able to uh, get in the lane and get fouled. Will Wade joining us here, LSU men's basketball coach. The Tigers rolling to Rupp Arena last night and up in the Wildcats 73-71 to move to 10-1 and in conference play. They'll travel to Athens on Saturday. Coach, at about the eight-minute mark last night, Dick Vitale on ESPN called this a, a two heavyweights in the middle of the ring just going at each other in the Southeastern Conference. It's easy for us in this medium to get lost as well as the fan base into what you accomplished last night. Um, th- does this do anything for your program as far as going into their place, beating them, whether it's uh, recruiting or, or just the overall stability of what you have now accomplished in just a, the short time in Baton Rouge? Well, we're about to find out. I'm going recruiting here in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I got a couple of games to get to today and tonight. So I'm fixing, fixing to head out here in a little bit. But uh, uh, I, mean, I think it gives you validation. Anytime you beat you know, a national program, uh, you know, one of the top, Certainly the standard bearer in our league and the top two or three programs in the country. But I think, I think they'd lost eight times at home, um, you know, going into the game under under Coach Calipari. Yeah. And I don't think he'd ever lost as maybe a top five team. So, um, you know, I mean, yeah, it gives you, it gives you a little validation to what you're doing. You're not selling, you know, hey, this is what we're going to do. Hey, this is what we've done. And um, so I think it um, I think it certainly helps us and hopefully get our, get our fans excited. I think everybody's excited and, and, and fired up and, um, you know, we've just got to we've got to continue to be ourselves. We got to we got to stay hungry, and uh, we got to continue to compete at a at a high high level um, as we as we move forward here the rest of the year. And, and coach, we we kind of one of the themes of our first thing we were breaking down the game was the tail of two halves angle shot. T-Bob, much- I thought, T-Bob, I thought you were going to ask me about our road losing. <laughs> hey, 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 hey! Yeah, I call. Way. I've been you calling ask about that. We're six and zero. We just won in Kentucky. I've been asked about that anymore. Okay, okay, that's all fair. That's all fair. Uh, I've also been calling y'all the Road Warriors, and y'all have absolutely lived up to that that moniker once again last night. Uh, what do you tell? So I, I know that it was a couple games ago when the two threes right for a half. You said you wouldn't want to be there at halftime to hear what I told that team. With all the adjustments, how much better y'all played in the second half last night? What do you tell the guys down eight in Rupp last night? Well, it's, it's a little bit different. Mississippi State, I didn't think we had to. Hey, Rob, I just felt like we had to calm ourselves down. We were, we were very calm. We had to make a few adjustments. We had to adjust how we guarded their pin downs. They were killing us on that. And, and, and we did a poor job in the first half on that. So we had to adjust that. We had to adjust a few things, you know, with the offense. They were up 20-6 to six in, the, in the paint at halftime. And we just annihilated them in the paint in the second half, which, uh, which helped. So we had, to, we had to adjust a few things by defensively keeping them out of the paint and offensively opening the court a little bit more. To get us into get us into paint, we had to change a little bit of our spacing, change where some of our guys, um, you know, were, were, were located, and then, um, you know, we just we just had to make uh, we, we had to make a few more adjustments. Just tell our guys to to be ourselves, get back in attack mode. I thought Kentucky attacked us in the first half. We were a little bit uh, we were a little bit timid, which you can't play timid in those type environments. And I told our guys just be aggressive, be confident, stay loose, do what we do. Do what we do, and we've got to do it at a high level. I told them we need our best defensive half of the year, which uh, which we may have had, and um, you know we were able to we were able to, to to figure it out. But it was really much calmer than the Mississippi State. I thought Mississippi State we were getting out competed, we weren't playing smart. But I thought uh, really we we played pretty smart. The only stretch of that game at Kentucky that we didn't play very well was about the last two and a half minutes of the first half. Yeah. You know, it was a four point yeah. game. We got yeah. the front end of a one and one. And then you know we did some just we, we did some out of out of out of body things there at the end of the first half. So felt like we just get back in there and settle in and, and and do what we do and slowly, slowly, slowly get it to that six minute game. And then, like I said, we have a lot of confidence in that six minute game and go uh, go find a way to win the game. I love one thing about this team that stands out, especially during this run, is that it seems to be somebody different every night outside of the big guys, outside of Nas and Tremont and the guys that affect the game every night, Skyler. Last night it was Emmett, 5 of 5 from the field, 19 minutes, 2 of 3 from the free throw line, and his ability to, to affect the game on both ends, uh, protect the rim, sprint the floor, make the catch, and finish. I thought he got fouled on both of those finishes in the second half. What did you think of his play last night? 
I thought he was phenomenal. You know, that left-hand tip dunk was about as good mm-hmm. as you'll see mm-hmm. in the second half there. But you know, I was really, really proud of him. He was obviously frustrated the last couple of games. He hadn't played as much. And, and, and he hadn't played as well as he wanted to. And, um, I, I was just very, very proud of him. Me and him went to eat on, on Sunday afternoon, had, had a good meal, and talked some things over. And I thought he was in a great, great mindset going into the game and, and ready to go. And, you know, it was a shame he picked up those two fouls in the first half. We ended up playing him. We yeah. shoot all our bigs had two fouls just about the first half. So we had to, you know, Days picked up his third. We played Days for a while with two. We played Nas for a while with two. We played Emmett for a while with two. And I was pretty disappointed he got that second foul because I thought he was – I had a good feeling going into the game he was going to play well. But he prepared well, and, you know, he, he really bounced back from, 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 from a tough couple games. So I was very, very – proud of him and that's why you hang in there hang in there hang in there and then you can um, you, you can have nights like he had last night but he was certainly a difference maker for us uh being able to finish he had four offensive rebounds if i'm not mistaken yeah and um, he just did a, did a phenomenal job for us what's the challenge on the quick turnaround to athens <laughs> well we got you know we've, we've got to stay hungry and we got to we got to get ourselves ready to go so you know there's landmines everywhere michigan 16th yeah. in the country went to penn state and got beat last night so um, there's a lot of landmines left, and, and we've got to just be us. We got to focus on us, be us, continue to get better, continue to stay hungry, and uh, go in there and uh, and do what we do. See if we can get road win seven for T Bob. <laughs> <laughs> the locals. Hey, did you dance? Did you dance after the game? No, we didn't dance. Yeah, okay. I think the dancing we, days might we, be done. For yeah, a minute. so y'all yeah. are above dancing. Yeah, they're kind of they're making their way. If you, I, you, if I was if I was pretty excited, we had a pretty good little celebration. Everybody was jumping around, but. Um, you know, our guy, I mean, you know, we, we thought we were going to go in there and win. Yeah, guys. yeah, yeah, straight up. I think I, I mean, I, you know, I, I, we were confident. We, we, we were ready to go, and I knew we were going to play well. And, uh, you know, we, you know, our guy, it wasn't a surprise to our guys in that locker room. No, don't get me wrong. We were fired up. You don't beat the fifth ranked team in the country, <laughs> even if you're prepared and all that stuff all the time. But, but we, we were very, very confident uh, going into the game. We liked our matchups. Um, and, um, you know, we just need to go in there and execute. I told our guys, uh, uh, you know, like we just got to hit singles and doubles. The night before yeah. the game, I showed them the fourth inning from the American League champion or, uh, Division Series between the, between the Red Sox and Yankees, where the, the, the Red Sox scored seven runs and hit all singles and doubles. They had one triple at the end. But I just told our guys, just be contact hitters like this. It leads to big things, big innings. And we're going to make some outs, just like they did. They got three outs that inning, obviously. But we're going to make some outs. And, Let's just be contact hitters, be singles and doubles. We don't need an out-of-body experience to win here like most teams. Just be us, be simple, and do simple better. And our guys did that for most of the night. They did, and they, and they made a national statement. Now you look forward to Georgia this Saturday. Look, I really like the matchup, Coach. I'm a bit worried about y'all taking the show on the road. <laughs> I always get, you know, it's the toughest thing to do, win on the road in conference. No, look, for real. Uh, yeah, you, You've said it, and, and it is, and which makes the 6-0 record the manner in which y'all have won all the more. Did you see Where this, Dad? In the last 52 years, only three times on the road has LSU come back from an eight-point halftime deficit. Y'all have now done that twice in the last week. Yeah. Well, we're you know, the more you win, the bigger the games, the higher the stakes. Obviously, you know, there'll be a great crowd at Georgia. It'll be close to sold out, if not sold out. So we're going to you know, have to go in there and, and, and continue to do what we do and, and, and play well in tough environments. and can't dig ourselves these holes the locals are buzzing and dancing here on basketball man nice win last night a week from saturday the number one team in the country will be in the Meribit center get ready buckle up thanks coach